We installed a Kindwater E3000 whole house filter for cleaner water, but when we lab tested it, the results were not what I expected. Did the filter fail? Was there something worse in our water? Well, it turned out the problem might not have been the filter itself. In this video, I'll explain a mistake we made, how we fixed it, and our results from two rounds of testing. Before we dive in, I wanna be transparent. We installed this system in a home in Colorado on a municipal water source, and because water quality varies so drastically from place to place, keep in mind that our results might not perfectly reflect the system's performance in your area. Before installing the Kind filter system, we knew that pre-testing our water was crucial. This way we'd understand exactly what contaminants were present and if the filter could handle them. It's super important to test your water before buying any filtration system and ensures you get the right equipment for your specific needs. We used a service called TapScore for all of our testing during this project. They were fantastic and I'll leave a link in the description for anyone interested in learning more about their own water quality. We installed the Kindwater E3000, a three-stage point of entry filter and conditioner system back in July of 2023. I won't get into the technical specs of the system right now, but there's a link to it in the description as well. And then we waited until mid-October to conduct our first post-installation test. When we got the test results, we used the lab's health guideline level benchmark to analyze the data, which prioritizes human health and is much more strict than the federal MCL standard. Our pre-install test showed we had both chloroform, a disinfection byproduct, and lead in the water. This is significant because chloroform is carcinogenic and animal studies have shown it can impact multiple bodily systems, including the kidneys, liver, immune system, and nervous system. And you've probably heard of lead, which is a bit more infamous and extremely toxic and dangerous, especially for kids. It can harm their brain, hinder development and cause learning issues. And adults are also at risk with lead exposure linked to high blood pressure, trouble having children, nerve issues, and kidney problems. It can even weaken the immune system and cause anemia, and is classified by the EPA as a possible carcinogen. Our first test revealed that the kind E3000 reduced the chloroform by 93.5% and the lead by only 58%. This was surprising because I'd expected the solid catalytic carbon block media to be able to do a much better job with both of these contaminants. Here's why lead might be tricky though, it often comes from the plumbing itself. Contamination can come from the pipes bringing water to your house, your home's internal plumbing, or even different pipe fittings. So while the system did reduce some lead, it could be getting into the water after it passes through the filter. There was also a 105% increase in copper detected at 0.537 ppm, which put it over the HGL of 0.3 ppm. All that said, I wanted to gather a bit more data before presenting our findings. We decided to replace all the filters in the system, use them for a few more months, and then test again. And during the filter change, we realized we'd made a bit of a mistake during installation. But before I dive into that, do me a huge favor, like this video and comment below if you have any questions about the Kind E3000, our testing data, or water treatment in general. And if you're interested in clean water info, make sure you're subscribed so you get notified about our weekly videos when they're uploaded. So the sediment filter, meant to trap large particles first was actually last, which meant we'd accidentally installed the system backwards. Believe it or not, this can be an easy mistake to make even with the clear instructions in the manual and labels on the bracket. So now the question was, did this backwards installation affect the filter performance? And the good news is that our retest showed no chloroform or lead detected at all. I was honestly surprised by the dramatic improvement and it's hard to say for sure if the filter configuration was the culprit. There could be other explanations like variations in the source water or a compromised initial filter. This whole experience highlights the importance of proper installation and following the instructions carefully. It also demonstrates that even well-designed filters can be impacted by seemingly minor errors and that folks with experience are still human and can easily make mistakes. Now, before I wrap this one up, I wanna show you all the other contaminants that were detected below the health guideline level in all of our tests. Fluoride levels decreased with a 40% reduction in the first test and a 20% decrease in the second. We observed a slight increase in sulfate in both our tests by 4% and nearly 7% respectively. The first test showed a 9% increase in chloride, but the second test showed a 9% decrease suggesting potential fluctuations in the water coming from the distribution system. Nitrates were not detected in the baseline or first test. The second test identified a low level of 0.1 ppm. Aluminum was not detected in the unfiltered water. However, it appeared at 0.134 ppm in the first test, 
but wasn't found in the second. Copper levels spiked dramatically in the first test over a 100% increase, but then dramatically decreased by 97% in the second. Nickel and zinc both showed reductions in the first test, 6% and 9% respectively, and were not detected in the second. Barium levels dropped in both tests, 73% and 20% respectively. While not reduced in the first test, manganese became undetectable in the second. Interestingly, the first test eliminated strontium entirely, but the second test showed an 18% increase. We observed a 10% decrease in hardness after the first test, followed by a 20% increase after the second. Calcium and magnesium, two major components of hardness, showed similar trends. Calcium levels decreased by 14% in the first test, but then rebounded with a 44% increase in the second. And magnesium levels dropped by 40% in the first test, but then rose by 55% in the second. Sodium levels increased slightly, just 7% after the first test, but then decreased by 17% after the second. Remember that all these contaminants were detected below the health guideline level or don't pose risk to human health. Now let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the data or wanna request another water filter put to the test. And if you enjoy watching videos like this, stick around for the next one coming up. Click or tap to watch now.